Last night, Donald Trump announced hundreds of people had been arrested in crimes related to vandalizing various statues. And now he's tweeted this, a list of suspects that the FBI is seeking information on because they vandalized federal property, I believe specifically the Andrew Jackson statue in Washington, D.C. Donald Trump says many people in custody with many others being sought for vandalization of federal property in Lafayette Park, 10 year prison sentences. We've also got many stories from local jurisdictions where individuals are being arrested for vandalizing statues. Finally, finally, someone is doing something, and I'm not surprised that it's actually Donald Trump. Now, he's not doing as much. He's not doing as much as people would like him to do in some instances, but many, many others are actually glad he's not taking a heavy handed approach and going to other cities and enforcing local laws because that would be, well, a bit dictatorial. Many Trump supporters are concerned that would bait Trump into looking like a dictator. Instead, what we're getting are weak Democratic politicians, mostly Democratic cities where this violence is occurring, and they're not doing anything to stop it. Now, finally, I believe they've actually gone in and cleared out the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, but it's still going on. The protests are still happening in Portland last night. I know it's Portland. These things are still happening. And notably in Washington, D.C., the far left fanatics want to tear down a statue of Abraham Lincoln freeing a slave in what makes absolutely no sense. Now, of course, they're arguing that it's offensive and it shows that their freedom is determined by white people or something, something that, to, uh, to that effect. But this memorial, my understanding, was actually paid for by freed men and women, people who actually respected Lincoln and wanted the statue to exist. A small group of fanatics now want to destroy it. So Donald Trump has reactivated the National Guard. I covered this yesterday. We saw the National Guard activated in Wisconsin. Barricades have surrounded the Lincoln Memorial, a specific statue, not the actual memorial, but a specific statue, as well as another statue. And park police are protecting it in fears that these fanatics are going to try and tear it down. But outside of the actual law and order that I want to get through, and I want to show you what's going on with the FBI and the park police, I think we need to talk about what this is and what's happening right now. It's the rise of a non-theistic religion, or as journalist Mikey, Michael Tracy calls, uh, uh, says in his Spectator article, it is a state-backed religion. And I don't think he's actually being hyperbolic. I think he brings up a very, very good point. This is an, an, an ideology. These are people who believe specific things not founded in fact, but feeling, and they're spreading it via scripture, telling people what books to read. These are books who make, that makes points that are unfalsifiable, that you can't actually claim you're not racist based on the arguments from these books that seemingly make no sense. So let's do this. Let's talk about law and order, figure out what's going on. Is Trump actually going to stop these people from destroying these statues? But let's talk about the rise of a non-theistic religion. I want to make one thing clear as we move forward. Many people are arguing that Black Lives Matter itself matters. Uh, Black Lives Matter is actually a religion itself. I disagree. I believe that Black Lives Matter is the official branding that was stolen by these intersectionalists for their new religion because it was a popular position. Now they are pushing forward something that has very little to do with the initial inception of Black Lives Matter. And many activists have pointed out the movement has been co-opted. The easiest way to explain this, just go and watch Dave Chappelle's 846 special. In it, he talks about violence and police brutality, but he doesn't mention anything about intersectionality. He doesn't mention anything about taxation or trans lives or anything like that. And you can see there is a very serious disconnect between what Black Lives Matter actually was and what it's becoming today as the woke cult seeks to take it over. Let's get started with the FBI, however. Before we do, make sure you head over to timcast.com slash donut if you'd like to support my work. There's many ways you can give, and I've got a P.O. box you can send things to. When you support me this way, you're basically giving me unfire, uh, fireability protection, or whatever you want to call it. The gist being, I run my own company. People may try and cancel me because I'm speaking out against these issues. When you support my work in this way, it makes it a lot harder for them to actually do that. Another way you can really help is just sharing the video. But of course, if you just want to watch, hit the subscribe button, the like button, the notification bell, and hopefully that'll be enough for YouTube to actually show you what's going on. But outside of this tweet from Donald Trump, let's get to the news. We can see this. It says seeking information for the vandalization of federal property. And they have a what looks like about 18 different uh, 15 suspects, it appears. Perhaps, uh, yeah, 15 suspects here. 
And they say the FBI Washington Field Office Violent Crimes Task Force, in conjunction with the U.S. Park Police, is interested in identifying several individuals who are responsible for vandalizing federal property at Lafayette Square in Washington, D.C. They mentioned this took place on June 22nd. Well, we have the story now from the Washington Post. They say the Park Police issued a release Thursday night that included photos of 15 individuals on or near the bronze statue and called for community members to contact the department's criminal investigations unit with identifying information. The U.S. Park Police and FBI are attempting to identify the individuals responsible for destruction of property and other related crimes. The announcement is the latest update in a series of clashes between Park Police and protesters over the statue of, of the former president riding a horse in Lafayette Square. It also comes as protesters vow to bring down other statues in the area, such as the Emancipation Statue in Lincoln Park. I kid you not. It is a statue honoring Abraham Lincoln freeing the slaves. They said it was about tearing down Confederates. It wasn't and it isn't. Many people will tell you it's communists. Okay, that's an oversimplification. What we're actually dealing with for the most part is an ideology. Now, this ideology is, in a sense, you can say it's communist or Marxist, and it holds some of these similar tenets. But the reality is it's just an ideology that uses aspects like original sin. It's very, it, it's very, it's, it's a religion. I think it's the easiest way to put it. Now, you can call it a cult, but I think it's, 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 it's prominence in the mainstream now warrants something more of a non-theistic religion. This is not something I came up with. I think this is actually, you, you can look to people like Peter Bogosian and Sam Harris, perhaps, who explain how this is a religion. The scary thing about what we're seeing now is that due to its non-theistic nature, it's extremely pervasive in government and its fanatics and zealots are easily infiltrating our institutions and our government and trying to employ these wacky, nonsensical tenets in law. They're trying to make us adhere to these weird things that make literally no sense. A, a good example as we move forward, because I do want to talk about some of these arrests and I want to talk about what, uh, what Trump says is going on. But a, a, a good example of these nonsensical tenets would be a recent viral video showing protesters going into a restaurant chanting, while you're dining, people are dying. These people have been told over and over again that many innocent people are being killed by police, but that's just not true, at least relatively. There are certainly innocent people or unarmed people who are killed by police, but the numbers are in the single digits or double digits. Out of 330 some odd million people, that's ridiculously low. In terms of, in, in terms of actual violent encounters with police, the numbers are also extremely low and violent crime is going down. Now, these facts go right over the zealots' heads, and this is where things get scary. Social media platforms will actually ban you for challenging their, their religious narrative, and they'll give you freaky explanations. They'll, they'll try and justify it, and then they'll argue their private platforms. But the reality is facts and science are not on their side. It doesn't matter. They believe it is, and they will mindlessly chant at you. I mean, you really got to look at some of these videos where the people are sitting in a park with their hands raised, mindlessly chanting. It's creepy stuff. It's a non-theistic religion. But okay, okay, we'll get to this. Let me show you some of what, uh, first what Trump said, and then some actual arrests. President Trump is applauding the arrest of hundreds of people in the wake of toppling statues and monuments nationwide during protests against racial injustice following the George Floyd killing. He says, you're talking about statues of Washington, Abraham Lincoln. They'd like to get Jesus. You know that, right? You know that, right? They said they want to get Jesus, and that's true. This is what sparked the riots in Wisconsin. A man was preaching that Jesus wasn't white. He had a baseball bat and was yelling at people in a restaurant. He got arrested. A riot broke out. Fanatics. This is what they are. They're chanting things that make no sense, and they're destroying property, and it's working. But a few people have been arrested in Arizona. A man was arrested for painting a Confederate statue red. Over in Jacksonville, a man was arrested for vandalizing a statue of Andrew Jackson. Now, these are just some, some local uh, instances. Trump claims many more have already happened. Because these stories are actually local, they don't make it to the mainstream. It's hard to know what's going on. But I will tell you this. As I've stated in many other segments, the protests have not stopped. They are absolutely continuing. You just don't hear about it. Now, one thing interesting here is that Trump is asking for a toppled D.C. Confederate statue to be put back up, a statue of Albert Pike, 
a Confederate general and leader of the Freemasons, was torn down and set on fire on the night of Juneteenth. This, I think it actually should go back up. Now, first, let me just tell you, I think it should be taken down. I think many of these Confederate statues should be taken down and placed in museums. I just don't think they should be removed by random violent mobs of zealots who want to destroy these things without discussing it with the public first. You do not get to just enforce your ideology. It doesn't work that way. Imagine if any other religious group was going around desecrating statues and imagery. You wouldn't like that either, especially if it was yours. If someone went and vandalized, you know, say a Black Lives Matter sign, people would be outraged. And they are. Apparently in one area where they, they painted Black Lives Matter in the street, someone peeled out over it, leaving tire marks, sort of vandalizing it, and they were furious. It's interesting then to see the media totally embracing this. The, the, the framing of these stories is, I got to say it's obvious, but it's also freaky. We know that for the most part, that, that this intersectional social justice, whatever you want to call it, has been expanding. It's been growing over the past several years. Well, now as these young people start gaining power in newsrooms and in large institutions, it's infecting everything. And this is, look, we can talk about opposing racism, but there's a big difference between what they're proposing, tearing down Abraham Lincoln and actually discussing, you know, opposing racism. I wonder how they how they try to claim that they oppose racism when they tear down ab- abolitionists. It actually doesn't make sense, but they'll try to make it make sense. And then you'll see the the, the pawns, I suppose, just repeating nonsensical statements whose uh, their opinions appear to be coming out of fortune cookies is the way I describe it. They repost the same opinions. They repost the same comments, and they don't actually have conversations amongst other people. They just chant you down. The best example of this, maybe the weirdest example, would be Daryl Davis, Daryl Davis is very famous for de-radicalizing Klan members. This is a man who is a blues musician. He's a black man. And he actually befriended Klan members and convinced them to abandon the Klan. They did. At an event I actually helped host in the South Jersey area, protesters protested him. And when he tried to speak to them, they chanted him down, insulted him, and called him a white supremacist. And he was shocked. He posted about it. And this post went viral. Now, many people thought this was funny, but I actually think it's kind of horrifying. These people are blind fanatics. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't care. They just demand compliance. If you don't agree with them and worship the same ideology as them, they will chant you down and you will not be able to talk to them. This is fanaticism. It's very different compared to what they say about Trump supporters. They say Trump supporters are blind zealots in the cult of Trump. Now, I understand that argument, and I can respect it to a certain degree, but I'll tell you this. These Trump supporters you see out waving flags actually will try to debate you. So the, 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 the easiest way to explain it, going back to Daryl Davis, you can walk up to a Trump supporter, talk to them, and they might not agree with you, and they might start yelling and you might get into an argument, but it's very, very different, you know, as to what this, uh, these, these other zealots intersectionalists do. Now, the main point I want to make here as I read you this story, this is an an amazing piece from Michael Tracy. The main point that I want to make is that Black Lives Matter was a protest movement. Intersectionalists are using the popular branding to inject their fringe non-theistic religion into mainstream pop culture, culture, and law, and it's working. But let me just read this for you. I want want to read you what Michael Tracy said because it's it's actually a really, really great take on what's happening. He writes for The Spectator, Black Lives Matter is a state-backed religion. In the eyes of many, this movement transcends politics. He says, protest often feels inadequate as a characterization for the public exhibitions that have erupted nationwide over the past several weeks. The term protest carries a connotation of actions carried out in opposition to existing structures of power. Hence, you protest against forces that are arrayed against you, even if some municipal bureaucrat might have reluctantly granted you a permit. However, at least in many jurisdictions, events which were presented as protests should more rightly be labeled as something along the lines of state-backed demonstrations. Michael Tracy is completely correct. All of these governors saying you can't do these things, but these were okay. These were state-sanctioned events. He says, for instance, in my otherwise sleepy town of Caldwell West, Caldwell, New Jersey, high school students organized what turned out to be astonishingly large protest march. Notably, 
the students accomplished this feat with the complete cooperation and participation of community authorities against which the youth of a previous era presumably would have rebelled. Parents, elected officials, school administrators, and even the police. It thus took on the appearance of an authorized civic gathering, almost like a 4th of July celebration or a Christmas tree lighting. At the request of students, a police detective sang the national anthem, which made for a bizarre contrast with the legions of suburban white women in yoga pants kneeling with their fists raised defiantly to the sky. Incongruous as the optics may be, these are, in a way, a new kind of state-backed demonstrations. Of course, not every protest across the country has received such explicit state backing. One feature of this movement, if you can really call it that, is its astounding geographical reach, with demonstrations sprouting up even in the unlikeliest of regions. A map of recent protest-like actions in Pennsylvania shows events in even the most conservative rural portions of the state, apparently without much in the way of resistance. So there is clearly something extremely novel about this phenomenon, and we've only begun to scratch the sociological surface. Among the reasons why the still amorphous movement became so widely popular with such breakneck speed, with such with such breakneck speed, is perhaps because in the eyes of many, it transcended mere politics. Many so-called protests took on features highly reminiscent of religion, collective worship, public confession, and requests for salvation devotional poses and gestures, group prayer, the creation of, new, of a new pantheon of martyr figures to revere, and the adoption of liter, liter, lit, lit, liturgical rites and rituals. Children and teenagers have been encouraged to publicly repent for their sins, with the original sin being white privilege. He then goes on to tell a story about young people espousing this nonsensical statement. I, I really do say nonsensical because, listen, I grew up Catholic. And with all due respect, many of these things are founded in faith, meaning you have to just believe and have faith in what these tenets are. I see the exact same thing, and that's why I reject it. Perhaps these people didn't grow up with religion, so they don't understand what it is they're doing, embracing a new non-theistic religion. Let's read a little bit more. He goes on to say, you can tell these demonstrators enjoy state backing because they are commonly in direct violation of legal directives, still on the books, which prohibit mass gatherings due to the still raging pandemic. Not only have the, have the demonstrations been permitted, they have been avowedly endorsed and participated in by the very elected officials whose orders nominally prohibit them. For example, Executive Order 202038, decreed by Governor J.B. Pritzker of Illinois, still currently in effect bars any gathering of more than 10 people statewide. But on June 19th, Pritzker himself took part in in a Chicago rally uh, of far greater than 10 people, at which no social distancing was evident. Theoretically, he could be subject to prosecution for violating his own order. Needless to say, there were no exemptions in the order for Juneteenth uh, commemorations. The religious fervor underlying these demonstrations is undoubtedly a significant factor in why they have been granted license to supersede legal strictures relating to the pandemic. In some cases, more traditional religious leaders have offered personal legitimation. Cheryl Garb, senior pastor at First Wayne Street United Methodist Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana, described witnessing smoke bombs go off in the parking lot of her church on the chaotic first night of rioting in the city. Subsequently, Garb made the very tough decision to install massive, unsightly wooden boards on the exterior of the church in order to protect the stained glass windows. Quote, I felt like if we if we did not protect the church and something happened, it would be another reason for people to criticize the movement. I felt like to have a church damaged could potentially be destructive to us addressing the issue of social justice. Absolutely incredible. I'm looking at all this. These churches are being told they can't sing. They can't gather. But many church leaders still embrace this. I'm watching people have their businesses burnt to the ground. And what do they say? Well, I still support the protests in the Chaz in Seattle. Several businesses are filing a lawsuit against the city. And their opening paragraph says, we do not condemn the protesters. We support their rights and their messages while they're simultaneously suing the city. I'm sorry. Nonsense. 100 percent nonsense. You can't simultaneously support this and then sue against it. But this is what we're seeing. State-backed religion 
New York City will paint Black Lives Matter on street in front of Trump Tower. Now, listen, if you want to adhere to any religion, I got no beef. I don't care what it is. And if you like Black Lives Matter, you shouldn't take issue with it being called a non-theistic religion. It holds all of those tenets. You have original sin, which is, I believe, unique to, to Christian, uh, Christian religions. But you have your privilege. You have your repentance. You have your unfalsifiable claims that if you reject racism, it proves you're racist. Well, there you go. The state should not be painting political messages or, non or religious messages on the streets. You can argue whatever you want about politics or religion. Fine, I don't care. But the point is, New York City painting this opens up the street to be a public forum. Therefore, anyone should be allowed to paint anything they want on the streets. Unfortunately, the issue, the, the greater issue here is that the state has embraced and is backing this religion. That's why it seems like Trump is the only one fighting back. The people that want to tear down these statues are fanatics. They don't know what they're tearing down or why. And that's why they tear down abolitionists. I'm sorry. There is, it's, it's, a, it's a fact, not an opinion. Let me tell you the fact. These rioters and fanatics have torn down abolitionist statues. Fact. You want to call them protesters? Okay, fine. I call them fanatics. That's my opinion. But it is a fact they have torn down abolitionists. My opinion on the matter? If you claim to be fighting racism, but tear down statues of people who have actually fought racism, that makes literally no sense. I'm sorry. Anything you argue after the fact is just justification for tearing down actual anti-racist images. Now, the argument they have is that these were erected by white supremacist structures. They change the definition of words. They rename streets. They paint their messages in the streets. They're tearing down statues. Celebrities are coming out and crying. And I'll do I'll have more segments on this later. But listen, I'm telling you this now. The most important thing for you to understand is that Black Lives Matter is the official brand name of a non-theistic religion known as intersectionality. Black Lives Matter emerged, I believe, in response to Trayvon Martin. It had a specific purpose. Listen to Dave Chappelle and you will hear that purpose and you will hear what he's talking about. But listen to these people and they are preaching some kind of religion. So I ask, why is it that the overwhelming majority of these people are white? Why are they not black? Because it is a progressive movement and it's always been. It's been a white progressive movement. Progressive activists in this country are overwhelmingly white and have college degrees and make more than six figures. But we are really entering a dangerous place, in my opinion. The new generation of young people have, are, are almost entirely adopting a religion. They're becoming overtly religious. It's amazing because many people thought that Gen Z would be more religious in terms of Christianity. I don't believe so. Take a look at this story from Michigan. Michigan GOP candidate blames liberal universities for brainwashing his daughter with Marxist ideologies after she told residents, please, for the, for the love of God, do not vote for my dad in a viral tweet. I'm sorry, man. I, I actually will blame the parents on this one. OK, if you don't raise your kids properly and give them mental fortitude and train them, you end up with incels and you end up with zealots. You end up with people with a deranged worldview that can't function properly on their own. If your children are disavowing you because you sent them to this university where they were indoctrinated, it is your fault, period. Now, this young woman's an adult, fine. And I can blame the, 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 the fanatics and the preachers, the firebrands of, of intersectionality. But the reality is, too many parents think they can hand off their kids to some institution and think that that's it. They'll be raised properly. And then they're surprised. But it's the liberal university who did this. Sure. But you are the parent who should have prepared your child to better understand the world, to have the mental fortitude to resist brainwashing and cult-like ideologies. But you couldn't do it. So this is what you get. Your own children disavowing you. You can say whatever you want, but it's sad, really. But anyway, outside of the blame game, my opinion this is a really good example of religious fervor. This young woman disavowing her own family is insane. It really is. Hey, at least Christianity has honor thy, thy father and thy mother. This doesn't. The religion of intersectionality says disavow your own family members. Now, that's why I would actually call it more of a cult, but it's become so mainstream. I guess you can call it a religion. But to me, what makes something a cult, at least one aspect, is trying to sever people from their relationships. Religions 
literally don't do that. I mean, colloquially, they may when you get people saying, you know, like, I won't, you know, I will, I'll disavow my children if they're LGBTQ or something like that. But the Bible doesn't say to do those things. It actually says to honor thy father and thy mother. Anything that happens culturally after the fact is, in my opinion, not necessarily related to religion, but more the culture built around it, which is problem, which, which can be problematic. In this instance, the cult is telling you to abandon your family. That way they can keep you away. This is what cults do. They pull you from your family. They feed you all this information. They exploit your vulnerabilities. And this is what we have now. These people are going to go to prison. But I tell you this, heed my warning. As these state-backed religions expand or the state-backed religion expands, you can arrest the people for tearing down the statues. I assure you, if Donald Trump gets, uh, doesn't get reelected and Biden gets in, you will see all of these people arrested for tearing down statues pardoned. They will be pardoned and they will be released. We are already watching morality policing take place. The state is already sanctioning these religious events. Okay? Read Peter Bogosian, okay? You gotta, you gotta read this stuff, and I, and I mean it. This is an article. I'll include it in the description below. This is from Pathios. Now, I believe this, I don't, I don't know who this is written by, uh, Gene Veith. Pathios, I believe, is Sam Harris's book, Intersectionality as Religion. Read up on this stuff and you will start to understand. And maybe you can talk to your friends about how they're embracing religious tenets. They might not want to hear it because many of them have been indoctrinated into a religion. But this is what's happening. This is the weird fracturing which creates the political homeless. The people of strong mental fortitude who have never been overtly religious are sitting back and saying no to this the same as they would any religion. And it creates a weird position where you have religious conservatives, be it Christianity, Judaism, or otherwise, and you have intersectional theists or, or intersectional religious folks, yeah, cultists, whatever you want to call it. People like me, I grew up Catholic. I left the church. I consider myself to be non-theistic, but I, I wouldn't say spiritual. I do personally, I do believe in God, but I don't believe in any one of these one religions because the way I, view, uh, the way I see religion for the most part is everybody trying to look at the same room through a keyhole. They can't see the big picture, but they're all seeing little bits. You got to find the truth somewhere w w within there. But I guess you can call it some kind of agnostic, not necessarily non-theistic for sure. I am seeing people who just want secular view, like secular, um, a, a, a secular kind of worldview, politics, and a separation of church and state resisting all of this. But if you want to understand what's, going, what's happening now and what's going to happen, you should read up on this stuff from Sam Harris and people like Peter Bogosian and James Lindsay and Helen Pluckrose. They're the Sokol Squared uh, uh, hoaxers. You should check out their stuff. Read about intersectionality as a religion, and they'll start breaking things down to help you better understand it. But I'll wrap it up with this. The state has already sanctioned this religion. Is there going to be a lawsuit? There have been. Will it do anything? Maybe not, because they've infiltrated too much. It could be too late at this point. I guess we'll see how things play out. But I'm not optimistic at this point. Like, they're, they're, morality placing is here. They're going to start arresting people. The FBI will arrest them. Watch what happens after Trump, if Trump loses re-election. Biden will get in, and Biden will announce at the federal level, the FBI will pardon all of these people who tore down these statues because the, the statues are bigotry, blah, blah, blah. That's my prediction. I guess we'll see. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. at youtube.com slash timcastnews, and I will see you all then.